It's absolutely horrendous. We've been right across this all day long. Our uh, Home and Security Editor, Mark White, is there, has been there uh, for most of the day. Let's cross to him uh, and get an update. Mark, can you bring us up to speed, please, with the very latest? Well, the breaking news that uh, we brought you about 40 minutes or so ago was a confirmation from a reliable source that the prime suspect in the murder of these three people and uh, the injury of three others is a West African migrant with a history of violence. Now, this individual is in police custody at the moment. He was arrested around about 5.30 this morning after the white van that he now, according to police, stole from one of the victims that was murdered in these attacks, uh, was used to plough down three other people on Milton Street, right in the centre of Nottingham. Uh, he was arrested, tasered by armed officers, and he's been brought into custody now. There has been no official confirmation from authorities about the background of this individual. It's fairly early on in the inquiry. You wouldn't necessarily expect that to be the case, but clearly now the pressure will be on, uh, not so much for the police, but certainly the politicians uh, to confirm just what the status of this individual was. Was he here legitimately uh, working in the UK? Uh, was he an asylum seeker? Was he someone who had overstayed his visa? Lots of legitimate questions that need to be answered because with them come the other questions that need to be answered about the history of violence that we're told is attached to this individual. Was that violence perpetrated in West Africa before he travelled to the UK? And if so, were there enough in the way of checks to determine whether this person was uh, the kind of person who was not a threat to the public? Or was uh, these uh, incidents of violence where they committed while he was in the UK. These are questions we still don't know the answer to at this particular stage. We are still at an early stage in the investigation. It's not been treated as an act of terrorism. There, it appears, doesn't uh, seem to be the, the kind of evidence that points authorities in the direction of any kind of political link to the events that took place. Uh, but counter-terrorism police, the regional counter-terrorism unit, is helping Nottinghamshire police out with its ongoing investigation, as you would understand, given the gravity of the acts that unfolded in the early hours of this morning. Yeah, Mark, I remember, I think I was uh, pretty much live, actually, when the car went into uh, the gates of Downing Street. You'll remember that as well. It was very recently. It felt to me within oh, almost kind of minutes, but very quickly indeed, that as, uh, you know, we found out almost instantly it felt like, right, OK, this is not terror. I remember raising an eyebrow while I was on air because we was immediately getting the feedback that this was a white male uh, that had driven into the gates like this. So how come in that instance it was so quick that information like this was coming out, whereas in this one, uh, we're saying we've got credible sources, etc., but it's not yet being confirmed by the police. Why the delay? Yeah, I mean, I think in the, ins uh, the instance of uh, Downing Street, uh, had that been a very significant incident with multiple fatalities, then there would have been a lot of delving into the background of this individual beyond just the person that you see in the car and that would take some time and there would be all kinds of questions around you know whether this was a political motivation and looking into contacts etc it was clearly i think the police were confident enough to say at an early stage that actually the issue was some kind of grievance that this man had with authority over a number of issues that he had quite publicly shared with the officers who had detained him that told him it wasn't an act uh, or an intended act of terrorism. With this particular man, we don't know whether he has been cooperating with authorities, but regardless of that, the fact that three people have been stabbed to death, three other people run over, one still critically injured, uh, that requires a full level 
uh, delve into the background of this individual to determine just who he is, who he's connected to, if he has any affiliations uh, and contacts to extremist groups or political movements. All of that will take time and will need to be looked into. There's nothing, it seems, pointing in that direction at the moment, but it doesn't mean that he didn't have a motivation that was still you know, a, 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 you know, an absolutely terrible, murderous attack for whatever might have been the particular motivation or reason will only come out in the fullness of time if and when this individual is formally charged uh, following the events of this morning. Gracious me. Shocking stuff, Mark. Thank you for keeping us up to date. And I'm very confident that as soon as we get an update, Mark will be back with us to bring us up to speed. Uh, Kelvin McKenzie, uh, Matthew Stadlin, keep me company till seven. I'll start with you, Kelvin. Uh, one of my viewers, Natasha, she has written in uh, saying, you know, former students used to go out and about, nights out. Uh, she's saying that she never would have even have considered anything like that, as most of us would not. You just go out and about, you go home. You do not expect to be in harm's way in this way. It's sickening. Is this a sign, as some people in my inbox are suggesting, that basically Britain is broken, lawless Britain? Well, I think there's two, there are two aspects to this. This is a uh, shockingly disturbing case and uh, the fact that he has turned out to be a West African migrant with, uh, with uh, um, mental health issues um, well, we need be, the police we'll, to confirm that, of course. No, but uh, well, hold on. Your own guy has confirmed it. So, I mean, he got it. He got it from a police briefing. Don't worry about that. So, let's take that as the first thing. So, that is an absolute disgrace. And will be the and there will be families who wake up tomorrow morning. Right? They haven't got their they haven't got their student kids anymore. They've gone in this mm -hmm. terrible, terrible attack. And the the older the older guy who was driving the van. He's dead. I mean, it's beyond shocking. This. It, it's, uh, and there will be a lot of your viewers who will be taking the view that if we hadn't had uh, um, uh, this migrant, uh, then these people would be alive today. But let's take the wider issue of yours, which I think is the one which is, says the number of murders in our country. I mean, in Lo let's just take the area which I know best, which is London, right? Mm. Young. Londoners being stabbed to death by other young Londoners, young Londoners carrying huge knives around with them, right? This is a massive change in society in the yeah. last 10 years. And what seems to be the case, despite, despite extra um, uh, heavier sentences for these people, it doesn't seem to be dissuading them. We seem to have a... I, I talk about London, it's the only bit I really know, a lawless London, which I do not believe is helped by the way that the judiciary look upon these young killers and say to them, oh, they can't be named for X and Y reasons. I want to know who they are, I want to know what their background is, and I want them banged up, even when they're young, I want them put away for the safety of the rest of us. And to others to say, you are going off to jail for a huge amount of time, and we are doing it not because we're listening to some prison reform group. Yeah, Matthew, thoughts? I think the, the first thing to say is just to try to gauge the absolute tragedy of this, Michelle. I think it's unspeakable what's happened. And I can't, I'm a relatively new dad myself, I cannot imagine what the parents, the grandparents, the friends of these students are going through, or indeed the older gentleman who, who, who's been murdered. So. Just there are, there are very few words that can do anything like justice to the horror of it. And I feel for the, not just the family and friends, but also for the people of Nottingham. I, I don't know the city very well, but I was there last year for an incredible test match. And you want to be reading about Nottingham for the right reasons, not for these horrific reasons. So that's the first thing to say. Thoughts and condolences go out to everyone involved. The second thing to say is that contempt of court kicks in at arrest. Mm. A lot of journalists don't know this. They think it kicks in at when someone is charged. It kicks in at arrest. So the last thing I'm going to do is speculate or comment or give any sort of opinion on this arrest. The third thing I'd say about lawlessness more generally in this country, I looked up the stats actually before coming on air 
And to my surprise, given the massive cuts that the Tory government has made on the police since they came to power in 2010, they're trying to build back now. But to my surprise, serious crime, if I've interpreted these statistics properly, the serious crime seemed to be down in 2022 compared to pre-pandemic levels. You couldn't properly compare the pandemic because, of course, we were locked up for chunks of that. That surprised me. But as a Londoner, born and bred in West London, my sense now is that there is a creeping lawlessness, that you do see people, whether they're driving motor, motorbikes like maniacs around the place, these delivery bikes, or whether it's drop-offs of, or jugs in broad daylight, to me, the police haven't quite got a grip on the capital. I can't speak for the rest of the country, and my experiences are anecdotal. But for me, more needs to be done. Yeah, and if you're watching, you're wondering what this is, uh, you might have just joined us for the first time. The footage that you're seeing, this is exclusive to GB News. This was an eyewitness supplied us with this footage uh, from uh, a property in Nottingham. What you're, what you're seeing here is the suspect being apprehended. That is what we are playing on your screen right now. Are you in? In Nottingham uh, right now. I'd love to know how do you feel? What is the sense, uh, the feeling, the emotion in and around Nottingham right now? We spoke then about lawless uh, London. I'm not a Londoner, uh, but it does certainly feel to me like there is, it feels as though that there is this plague of lawlessness and I have lost count now of the amount of videos. In fact, actually, I've stopped autoplay on my social media because I can't cope with seeing the amount of violence that I seem to be accidentally exposed to when mm. I'm just browsing my Twitter. Yeah. And the amount of people that are charging around with knives in broad daylight, that is the thing that sickens me. And I think, to your point, yes, there's not a lot of bobbies on the beat, and we can debate that till the cows come home. I think there's almost as well, uh, understandably, by the way, I think there's a big fear among members of society now. You saw in France, didn't you, when that guy was going into the playground and people were stood filming him. They were running past him. There were reports saying, you know, eyewitness said she saw a man stab a baby in a pushchair multiple times. I'm like, I beg your pardon. Someone stood there and watched a man knife a baby right, in but, a pushchair. Right. But there is a problem there, isn't there? I mean, have you seen the size of the knives? I am. I mean, they are literally this long. And there was somebody going mad and people feel scared, mm. feel scared. I do understand that. Every so often there is a, a person of courage who steps forward and takes these people on. So the question is, what could possibly be done about it, right? If it is an explosion, most of it is drug related and much of the drugs are, seem to be carried out by younger and younger people. Why is that? Because the police have great difficulties in actually you know, grabbing hold of these young kids. So the question is, what do we do about that? Kelvin, I'd be interested to know from you whether you think that the police should be clamping down harder on the people who use drugs. I know people who take drugs casually, take drugs, drugs socially. They don't have any fear of being stopped by the police or arrested? Well, I think that is a very good question and we're going to ponder it in the break. Uh, I want to throw that out to you. What do you think uh, about law and order in this society? I want to pick up on the point that Matthew made as well. Every single one of us wants the person that is responsible for this absolutely disgusting uh, attack in Nottingham today. We want those people to be brought to justice so we will not say and do anything that would compromise that. So if you're sitting at home screaming uh, at your TV set. Michelle, call it what it is. Call it what it is, perhaps, uh, is what you might be saying. I can see it coming through in my inbox. I understand your sentiment, but I, I need to be careful to make sure that we don't do anything that would prevent the person that's done this being uh, brought to justice. None of us uh, would want to be responsible for that. So for now, tell me, do you think uh, crime is getting worse in your area? Do you think there is a sense of increased lawlessness in Britain? Tell me, uh, do not not go anywhere. All of